Next on Worcester News tonight, breaking down the presidential debate. A look at reaction to last night's duel between the two candidates. Plus, a Worcester organization helping out people affected by Hurricane Matthew. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight with Sunday's presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. The town hall format not doing much to keep the candidates from trading insults and sharing a few heated exchanges. The tone of the debates are drawing concern from parents of school-aged children who are watching the debates for homework assignments. Our Catherine Andrioli has reaction on last night's war of words. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Audiences across the nation were stunned after watching Sunday night's debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. My immature little brats. Many people we spoke with in the area pointing out the inappropriate language and behavior between the candidates. If they're heckling each other here and there, I don't think that that's proper. For students across the country, watching the debate has become part of their homework assignments. Today we spoke with local parents and grandparents who weighed in on whether or not it's appropriate to do so. I have two grandsons who are seven years old and they're watching some of it and they're pretty concerned. Lynn Mello is a grandmother to two young boys. She believes it's inappropriate for any teachers to be assigning the debate to young children. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted them to watch a debate, though. Just the news is upsetting them enough. Other people we spoke with say they would encourage their children to watch the debate. A lot of them, too, because um, <clears throat> leadership is, is a very important thing. I think when we teach our children, you know, at this age, you know, to engage in leadership, I mean, to know how to lead people and to know how to be responsible as far as, I mean, language, speaking, you know, getting prepared for positions here and there, I think it's important. As long as the parents are there explaining the inappropriate behavior and what's right and what's wrong, I mean, learning about, you know, presidential elections and things like that, I definitely agree that they should learn more about that. Everyone we spoke with agreed that in the upcoming debate, the candidates need to focus more on the issues and less on the insults. Just more about the issues and, and, you know, not less about them picking on each other because that's just ridiculous. In Shrewsbury, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester News Tonight. Now, last night's debate was the second of three debates scheduled between the candidates. It's generating a lot of interest as next month's election approaches. The debate dominating talk radio today, the Jordan Levy show on News Radio WTAG, full of callers reacting to the debate and talking about the two candidates. We asked host Jordan Levy if he thinks what he thinks about the debates, and he thinks the next one will be just as contentious. These are these are two people that know how to play the hardball game. He knows it from the uh, from the business. And she knows it from politics. These are not two nice people running for president. These are two people that know how to get down into the gutter and play the game down there. You've seen that in the two debates. The final debate is scheduled for Wednesday, October 19th. As the cleanup continues from Hurricane Matthew, the Be Like Brit Foundation here in Worcester is seeing an outpouring of support for the people of Haiti. The nonprofit is holding a food drive to help those affected by Hurricane Matthew. Our Brittany Schaefer checked in today as the donations were coming in. I am totally overwhelmed with the amount of people that are showing up. If you can see this, this is just amazing. Hundreds of people stopped by Be Like Brit Monday to donate non-perishable food and health care items to Haiti after Hurricane Matthew devastated the island nation. And we've had people from all over, from uh, Chelmsford, from the North Shore, close to the Cape coming today, and it's... It's overwhelming. I am just beside myself. I can't believe how the community has come out and rallied around Be Like Brit. The foundation will be distributing the products straight to the people of Haiti. They receive thousands of donations and say the vast amount of food will go a long way. The way we're going, we're going to be able to feed a lot of people for a long period of time. I filled my car up and another friend's car up and we came up and dropped everything off. So I just needed to do something to reach out to the my friends and family down in Haiti. Be Like Brit was started after tragedy struck in Haiti after the earthquake claimed hundreds of thousands of lives, including Brittany Gengel. Today, her mother, Cheryl Ann, says Brit would be proud of her community. As we say, she think it was fabulous, and uh, I think she would be overwhelmed with the kindness of people and people showing up and really wanting to make a difference. With the long weekend still in full effect, Cheryl Ann says she was unsure if people would still 
come out to donate, and she was happily incorrect. We weren't sure that as many people <laughs> would show up. It's nice to be wrong. I mean, the people, it's just, someone had said, we need a traffic cop here because the, the traffic in and out of here, it's a great problem to have. It's really going to help um, in an unbelievable way. Now, Be Like Brett has been receiving donations both today and Saturday and says if you couldn't stop by today, they will be accepting donations all this week. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Hurricane Matthew blamed for hundreds of death in, deaths in Haiti and several also in the U.S. as the cleanup continues. Well, in Worcester, police are investigating a home invasion on Scott Street. The alleged incident took place shortly before 3 Sunday morning. A man told police two women and a man forced their way into his home. Suspect then allegedly pulled out a gun and hit the victim in the head and forced him onto the floor. After about 10 minutes, the trio fled with a small amount of cash and cell phones. Anyone with any information on the crime is asked to contact Worcester Police. A Rutland, a Rutland man is recovering today after a team of first responders rescued him from the woods. 23-year-old reportedly got lost after attending a party on Bushy Lane late Saturday night. Police managed to ping his cell phone and find his last location. A canine bloodhound was brought in to assist in the search. Man was located around noon, suffering from hypothermia. He was carried to safety and taken to UMass Medical Center for treatment, and he was released last night. After being rained out yesterday, the Red Sox took the field at Fenway Park tonight for Game 3 of their division series. Here in Worcester, fans who couldn't make it to the game were glued to the TV, hoping the Red Sox can keep their season alive with a win at home. This is the first home playoff game for the Red Sox since they won the World Series in 2013. Fans we spoke with had a lot of confidence as the game started. A little stressful, but uh, like I said, I think it's going to be awesome. I think the guys are going to come through. Yeah, not go ahead. Coming, uh, I think the guys are going to come through, and um, I, th I just think they're going to rally around Poppy, and I, I think the fans are going to get them through the game. Well, unfortunately for Red Sox fans, the Sox lost to Cleveland tonight, getting swept in what is probably David Ortiz's final game. Well, it's a sign of fall and one which brings hundreds of people to New England, the fall foliage. These past couple of weekends, many have gone to Tower Hill Botanic Garden to see the changing colors as part of Fall Fest. As our Rosalind Flaherty shows us, today was a perfect day for the changing seasons. Can't be a better place to go leaf peeping than here. Hundreds spent the long weekend at Tower Hill Botanic Garden to see the foliage and enjoy all things fall. We've been here before, but in the springtime, so it's nice to come and see the changing leaves and how the plants look different at different times of the year. Tower Hills Fall Fest is a three weekend celebration of the harvest season. Monday, families took part in horse-drawn hay rides, alpaca petting, and tasty foods. It's great because we're, we're off from school, so it gives us a chance to get out. I'm on a beautiful day and see the gardens. Tower Hills interim CEO Suzanne Moss says she's not sure whether the drought had any impact in the leaves changing colors, but says the garden did experience issues this summer with trying to keep the plants well watered and living. Moss says they got an inch of rain on Sunday. This was a nice soaker. So yeah, we're really, we're really pleased with that. Fall Fest and Columbus Day are busy times for Tower Hill. Moss says it's a wonderful time to bring the family together. You know, of all the days that we try to get together as families and go do something, isn't it great that there's a place on a Monday holiday when you're home with your family that you can go out and do something? It's really a perfect time. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. In music news, fresh off a new album, punk rock band Green Day announcing they are hitting the road for a North American tour, and one of their stops will bring them right here to Worcester. The Revolution Radio Tour kicks off March 1st in Arizona. The band will crisscross their way through the country before making a stop at the DCU Center on March 17th. Tickets for the concert go on sale this